guess what guys it is women's history month <laughs> march is women's history month and i am excited about five loaves taking on women of the bible so for our good book versus the bible series where we typically talk about things that are in the good book but maybe not in the bible we're going to go in the opposite direction for this month. And we're going to talk about things in the Bible that I don't really find in the good book. So we have a tendency not to talk much about women in the Bible unless it's kind of a negative thing. Or sometimes it is the stories that cannot be overlooked. But I want to talk about a couple of people that are my personal favorites that I cannot talk about women in the Bible without mentioning. And I'm going to get to two today. The first is going to be one that we hear about all the time, but it's in relation to somebody else. And two is going to be one we probably haven't heard about, but I think she needs to be mentioned because this girl was a go-getter. These are both very hardworking, very smart very smart women in the Bible. And first, of course, is Ruth. We talk about Ruth all the time. Ruth has become a champion for the single woman. And I want to start off by saying Ruth had a husband first. She is looking for a second husband when she meets her Boaz, as we always talk about. But she is probably more champion for widows. So there is love after loss. But we gonna hold on to for those single women. I want y'all to know that, you know, God is working on it, babe. Keep working on you and God's gonna keep working on him. But for this story, Ruth and Naomi are mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. They have a very close relationship. They love each other. They care for each other. And after the loss of Naomi's husband and her two sons, one of the sons is married to Ruth. They are kind of left in a position where they got to figure out what they're going to do with their lives. Everything that they had known was taken away from them. Everything that was promised was taken away from them. And Naomi, the mother-in-law has lost it all. She lost her husband and her sons. So now she doesn't have a, a past, a, a future, a present. None of those things are working for her. And she becomes very bitter and is mad at God and is mad at herself. And I'm pretty certain is feeling like God hates her. And so she sends her daughter-in-laws away, said, go on back home, start over. Y'all young, y'all can get new husbands, go on back home. And Ruth says, nah, man, you need me. I recognize that I need you and you need to recognize that you need me. Number one, Ruth is loyal. Loyalty is something that we don't really hear about when it comes from women in the Bible. Women in the Bible are typically nefarious characters, but she's loyal. And in her loyalty, through her loyalty, she sacrifices and leaves her home, leaves her family, leaves everything she knows to go to this space where Naomi is so that Naomi can be taken care of. She is home health care aid. She is going to make sure that this woman is taken care of in her old age. She's going to make sure that she is secure and that she is safe and that she is she's provided for and nothing not leaving anything up to chance. So they get back to where Naomi is from. They get to this city and... It's the start of the barley harvest. So while they're sitting around trying to figure out what they're going to do, Ruth said, look, let me go on out this field. I'm going to pick some barley. I'm going to go ahead and turn it into grain. We're going to figure out what we can do. Maybe we can sell it. Maybe we can eat it. You know, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna go to work. I'm going to work and make sure we take care of us. She didn't say, oh, you're not my mom. Oh, I'm not from here. She didn't go outside and say, oh, we're destitute and we poor and we don't know what to do. Can you help us? She went outside and hustled and got herself a job. And she went to work. She didn't have the job drawing water at the well. She didn't have the job doing any of those other soft, pretty things. She was outside picking barley and then taking it and turning it into grain. She's in there grinding it as well. So she's not just doing the job that a woman typically would do. She's doing a job that men are doing. And she's working alongside men. Let this girl be hard working when you tell her story. And so far, Boaz ain't had nothing to do other than say, hey, make sure you leave some for her to gather. Leave some for her to collect. That's all he did. He didn't say make it easy for her. He said, leave some for her to collect. And when you're ready for lunch, come on, sit down and have lunch with the rest of the crew. <laughs> that's what he did. He gave her a spot on the crew. And that's what happened. And at the end of this story, she restores the faith for Naomi and God. Naomi who, Naomi, who had been hurt, who was ready to give up on everything, 
Her faith is restored. Our loyalty and our hard work and our beauty are all things that work together to help people have a newfound faith in God. She stood by this woman when nobody else did. And she was able to restore her faith in God, which is paramount over all of this. This woman worked hard and we're going to give her her credit for what she did. She went out in the field, y'all. She was working. So when you talk about Ruth, let's talk about her being a gatherer in the fields. Let's talk about her working hard days and nights in manual labor to get this done. Let's talk about her loyalty and her faithfulness to her mother-in-law, who in turn restored her mother-in-law's faith in God. A God that this girl didn't know ahead of time. A God that this girl didn't worship as a child. She did what was absolutely necessary to bring forth an entire generation of people who believe, trust, and know God before she married Boaz. Second woman I want to talk about is Abigail. I love Abigail. The Bible calls her clever. It said she's smart. She had a husband who was a mean fool. He was angry and a drunk and he treated people poorly and he was a mess on wheels and this woman ran behind the scenes and did everything that he that she needed to do to make sure that they would be successful she made sure that their life was good she kept the business running she managed the payroll she took care of the people this woman did everything that needed to be done to make sure that life was good for them as a people made sure that everything was fine she kept his thing going. He outside shearing sheep and she inside making sure that the money is paid, that everybody has the ground they need, that the right people are hired or in place. And so when King David comes through and says, um, sends his men and says, hey, tell this man that since we protected him while he was out here, while his shepherds were out with the sheep and while his wealth was sitting outside, we protected him and didn't take anything from him. Ask him to give us some food for our journey. And this fool of a husband was like, nah, the king, they ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm not giving him none of my stuff. And this joker goes home and prepares a feast. <laughs> he said, they asking me for food. That remind me, I got a lot. Let me eat some. He went in like a fool to prepare himself a feast. And my girl, Abigail, hears that the king is on his way in anger because he didn't get repaid good for the good that he had done for him. King David and his and his uh, soldiers had protected this man while he was out here, had been protecting this man's assets. And this man was like, nah, I can't even give you a peanut butter jelly sandwich. You get nothing, sir. <laughs> and so he sent him on his way. So she gathers up food and wealth and everything they need, wine and water and, and different animals that they need so that they can eat. And she sends all of that before him with a servant. And then she comes and bows before David and says, look, I know my husband is a fool. I know he's a mess. I know all of these things. But if you just listen to me, I make this whole thing go. I make this whole thing run. I'm an asset. I will make sure that it's taken care of. I've already sent you the provision that you needed. I know God is on your side and I don't want to anger your God. This girl right here was smart enough to know that if I go and I intercede on behalf of my foolish husband, that he'll be saved. God will deal with him in the way that he needs to deal with him, but my life won't be lost in the process. And David was like, yeah, I was coming to kill everything that moved in that house. You was about to be in trouble, but I'm glad you came. And not only are you smart, you're beautiful. The Bible says, before it even says anything about her, that she was beautiful and she was smart. Actually, it says that she was smart first. So let's make sure we give her her due for being clever. And of course, God deals with her husband in a way that he needs to deal with him. He go ahead and um, give him a quick little heart attack. And that man dies in a few days. And after that, because of who she was, because of her understanding of how to address the king, because she came and fixed the thing that was wrong, David came back and was like, go pick her up. She can come live in the palace. Let's make her my wife. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to treat her right. I'm going to treat her the way she should have been treated. Put some respect on Abigail's name. Well, y'all, if your name is Abigail, don't be Abby, be Abigail. Go ahead and say all of it because this was a woman who was smart first and her intelligence made her husband wealthy 
And when her husband didn't have a good sense to respect it and take care of it, she understood how to go outside of the lines and take care of it for him. Y'all, let's make sure we are loyal, that we are hardworking, that we are making sure that our actions are restoring faith in others, that we are clever, we are smart above all else, and then let's be beautiful. So we can be more than just what somebody thinks we are. We're going to be what God called us to be. You all have a fantastic day. And I'm praying that I see Ruth and Abigail walking among us in the next couple of weeks. God bless you guys.